welcome back to the channel. My name is Apex Pixel, and today I'm gonna to be talking about uh, light painting, or actually, no, I'm not gonna be talking about it so much as I'm just gonna be doing it and then showing you what happens afterwards. Uh, as you can see on the screen right here, I took some pictures of uh, a very cool car. So this night in particular, I decided to take a little bit of a different approach and try some night photography. I'm not a night photography guy. At, at the very most, when the sun dips just below the horizon, so you get that like beautiful sky, that's like as dark as I'll typically shoot. Even when I'm indoors, I don't like shooting because it's so dark and it's hard to really boost up the photo in post because you get a lot of grain and noise and all that stuff. But I tried something different. I went for a bit of a night photo shoot. Uh, I figure why not try something new. So as you guys may know, light bars are extremely expensive, uh, like light wands, things like that. I don't really have the funds to go buy one right now. So I figured I'd give it my best go and try my best to make a light stick or a light wand on my own. Um, so this is what I came up with actually. Hold on, let me go grab it real quick. I don't remember if it's recording. Yes, it is. This is the light stick in question. Um, yeah, bit of an odd arrangement here. It's a little foam sword for like kendo training, I think. And then I strapped a little like battery powered light rope onto it. Um, so it's got sort of like fairy lights almost, but in this sort of like zigzaggy arrangement. I, you don't need super expensive gear. Yeah, it definitely helps and it will improve your photo, video quality, whatever you want. But the point is, if you really use your imagination, I mean, you can get some pretty cool results uh, just from a light stick that I happen to make with maybe $10 worth of things. As long as you've got like the right idea behind it, you can kind of do anything you want. Um, and I think, the photos speak for themselves of course, but I think uh, they actually turned out quite nice. I mean, look at that crisp line of light. It's quite cool. I got lucky on this one because it happens to be a nice color. It's like a bluish color of light as opposed to like a yellow or kind of uglier color. So I did get lucky there. Um, and you're looking for contrast too, right? It's like when you put together the photo, um, you know, you really gotta do your best to like see the shot as a final shot before you actually take the picture at, at all. Anyway, I feel like I'm talking a lot. Um, but before you see any of this, I am going to show you how I took the pictures on site. I talked a little bit on camera and I, I think I got a little GoPro footage, so I'm just gonna play that right now. And uh, you'll probably be back with me talking to you. And I probably didn't shoot enough footage anyway, but uh, let's go ahead and try it anyway. Um, yeah, here's some quick clips of me taking photos. Yo, what's going on everybody? I really hope you guys can hear me. I'm under a, an underpass right now, but basically what's going on here? I've got the car. You guys are familiar with this as of now. Um, yeah, just kind of felt creative. Felt like I hadn't taken photos in a while, so I figured I would try something different. Um, I did, however, put together this contraption right here, which is essentially a kendo sword for training or whatever. I bought it for my brother for a, like, kind of a practical joke. I actually bought two so we could fight each other, but I strapped some lights onto it. Anyway, the thought with this was that I could maybe get a little bit of like light painting action in. So I've been trying that for a little bit um, and I guess you'll see sort of the results. I'm not too pleased at the moment. Maybe the edit can salvage them. Um, I didn't realize this underpass area would be so bright anyway. There's a bunch of like big lights uh, actually under here, which I thought were not a thing at all. I thought it was gonna be really dark. I don't know, I'm just kinda of like putting together random videos for this uh, little experience I have with a really cool car. So uh, that's enough talking. I'll let you guys get back to the video here and we'll see if I'm able to come up with some, uh, I don't know, something different, some cool night photos. Enjoy. You're back. Wasn't expecting you so soon. Yep, I didn't take a lot of B-roll. Anyway, uh, now that we're back at the computer, I'm back. Uh, I'm going to walk you through the photos that actually came out of my camera 
and how I got them to look like this. And you can find it on my Instagram if you're interested in seeing the photos uh, right here on the screen. And if you're interested in seeing photos on a bigger screen, go ahead and check out my website. Actually, I'll link that below the like button down there. Anyway, so this was like the first shot of the night. This was just me planning exposure. So I think this was shot on 0.4 seconds. So the shutter speed was almost open for a half a second. Um, this was kind of just like a basic shot that I started with and I, I chucked a little light edit on it, but this was just like a tester shot to see what my lighting was looking like. Um, and then I got to work with the light painting and like everything guys, I really want to press this real quick. Your first shots are not going to be the best and if they are, that's kind of random, but at the same time, I feel like it's happened to me before too. Basically what I'm trying to say is your first shots might not be great, but don't let that discourage you. You gotta keep going. You gotta kind of feel the vibe of the shoot and you definitely will. There's like a progression curve. When everything's like first new, you don't exactly know what to do. And then you start to feel more comfortable, you know, put the car in this angle, all that stuff, and it'll come naturally. So this was my first attempt at light painting. And this was like a 20 second exposure. Uh, the point was for me to be able to go all the way around the back of the car and then uh, ending at the front again, just below the camera. So I figured I need a longer exposure to do so, but 20 seconds I think is a little too long because you start to get a lot of these jitters as opposed to more smooth motion. And that has to do with like the stick and how you move it as well. But uh, I figured 20 seconds was a bit too long. So I did some interior shots, but I didn't actually end up using any of those. So this is kind of where I settled with my sweet spot. It's like two to five seconds, somewhere in there, depending on if I was closer and I could just wave my wand in front of the camera real quick, or if I needed to actually go run off and paint behind the car. Uh, so I ended up getting a couple of cool shots. These were not as great, in my opinion, until we get to the back of the car. So this is kind of like where I started. A lot of photos uh, I've seen in the past where it's just the tail lights and above are really cool. So I did that for one of them. Um, and this just shows how low the exposure was. I mean, I've brought it up two and a quarter stops um, and thank God for Sony Alpha cameras, they're able to do that, no problem. Um, but yeah, obviously, you know, 100 ISO, I was trying to keep it as low as possible. That was probably a mistake on my part because I should have bumped it up a little bit better. What I should have done is actually done two exposures, one for the, head, uh, the tail lights, which is really what I was trying to capture without getting blown out. And even still, they are blown out. Um, and then one for the actual base of the car, but I kind of like how it's dark in the background and the only thing you see are the bits of light, so we're keeping it. Um, then I came to like these photos. I think these turned out amazing. Um, if I do say so myself, I actually edited these twice and I feel like that's the case with a lot of my photos. I'll edit once with like a base edit with, I mean, I'm pretty much going for what I'm trying to go for in that specific photo. But uh, again, like the photography, on your first pass, it never actually really comes out the way you want it to, unless, I mean, if it does, that's great. But um, for me, this was not the case this time around. So I actually exported this photo, took a look at it, and decided I didn't like totally the, like, the vibe or the aesthetic of it. So I actually went in and re-edited them. And this is where I started with. So you can see, obviously, I'm brightening up a lot of those, um, like, well, mids and everything, even the shadows, so you can get the badge all properly lit up again. Um, yeah, just doing like a lot of touch work and color correction as well. I did a lot of split toning in these photos. Like, so I'm obviously coming into my curves. You have to use the curves because those are legendary. You're basically changing one color value to another color value, but across the entire image, as opposed to more of your selective color, which is, well, selective, right? You're using one color at a time to shift. Uh, you can do this a couple different ways, but I think the tone curve works great. Uh, that's also how I got like that faded flat black look in the photo as well. Uh, it's kind of like a faded blue tone um, in all of the shadows and all the darker parts of the image. Uh, I did kind of like a basic correction with a bunch of these colors. You can see what it looks like before and after. It just kind of like tones the photo back down again. Um, and here we go without the tone curve. Obviously that's doing a fair bit of work there. Um, did a little bit of split toning as well. I'm obviously using the older version of Lightroom, so I don't know what the, like, the tri-color thing, I don't even bother. Um, but the split toning kind of, like, deviates a little bit, so I put a little more, like, the orangish reds in the highlights, and I put some more, like, those teal, kind of bluish colors in the shadows, but I'm already doing that a lot with the, uh, tone curve, so it's a little bit extra, but not totally necessary. 
Uh, sharpen the image a bit, put a little masking on it. No noise reduction. I actually didn't think it needed any because I'm shooting at 100 ISO. And that's kind of the perk of having a tripod with a five second sh exposure. Um, you're not actually getting a lot of noise for how clean of a shot you're getting in low light. Um, so tripods are golden, by the way. Anyway, um, let's see. So no noise reduction. Probably could have put a little on there, but I don't want it to be all like flat. Uh, I kind of like that crisp look. So a little bit of noise actually is kind of nice. Um, and then not too much going on down here. In fact, nothing at all. I upped the saturation barely, which you probably won't even notice. Um, and usually I put a little vignette in it, but because this uh, photo is so dark anyway, I didn't bother. Uh, and I basically copied and pasted that preset onto just about every single photo I took and then corrected barely from there. Um, so once you get sort of a photo, if they're all shot from that same scene, not a lot is actually changing from shot to shot. So what you can do is basically just copy and paste the settings from one photo to another and essentially you're good to go. I do a little bit of correction to make sure nothing's like popping out or seems off. Um, and then let's see if I go back to the other one real quick. Did I have any masks on there? I had one mask to uh, darken the little bottom part of the car just so it draws your eyes to the, the actual action of the shot right here, which after a crop on Instagram probably was not necessary anyway, but I did it. Uh, this, this photo is actually really basic in terms of like after, you know, filter touch-ups. Um, I didn't feel the need to go in and change anything. I thought actually the photo looked pretty good as it was. Um, and then, yeah, I just got a couple varieties of angles here. I think I like this one a little better because it's covering the BMW logo a little bit less. Uh, let's see. Got the X-Drive, of course. So I'm just getting like branding. Honestly, uh, I didn't have much in mind for the shot, but I definitely knew I wanted to hit like the saturation between the reds and the blues of my light stick. I got this really cool interior shot. This is a, another big part of this shoot was actually just the trial and error to get a cool like light stroke that I wanted from my light bar or my light painting brush or whatever you want to call it. Um, so when you get a good one, I would say just quit. <laughs> um, if you get a shot like this where you know, the painting lines look actually really good. It's actually framing the M235 logo on the floor. That's amazing. The moment I saw it on my screen, I said, I'm not gonna do any better, and it's my best serve moving on to the next shot. Uh, so that's pretty much what I did. Then as I was leaving my spot, I discovered that my local mall has one of the biggest trees I've ever seen in my life, and a lot of Christmas lights, and a Ferris wheel. Uh, so I decided why not, you know, I'm taking these kind of like vibey pictures anyway. Um, let's just throw in a little bit of a Christmas vibe to it as well. And there's this great shot where you can line up the car in the middle of the road and shoot with the Christmas tree in the background. So I did that for a couple of shots. Uh, and I think these actually turned out really nice. I wasn't expecting it at all, but I mean, sometimes the best photos are the ones you don't expect. Um, yeah, so pretty much I did a similar touch to the original photos. Uh, I did like a crushed black um, sort of style, so it's got that faded look. And then I think with the lights, it kind of like pulls the picture all together. Uh, I mean, I think this is just a really pretty picture. It's got a lot of like the right colors bouncing off each other. It clicked, right? I felt like it was good. Yeah, so I mean, it was pretty minimal. Um, I would say but beyond getting the color correct and raising my exposure by like two and a half stops, which feels nuts anyway. The thing that took the longest on this shoot actually was um, painting out all of the imperfection. When you're working with a lot of like fairy lights or Christmas lights or anything like that, you're gonna get a lot of reflections in car paint. And for as clean a shot as possible, I wanted to get rid of uh, as many of those as I could. Um, so I actually spent a lot of time cleaning up the image, going in and removing any of like the excess light that I didn't want. Um, so that probably took the longest, but otherwise uh, I would say this photo shoot was a pretty good success. Um, in terms of this video, I'm sure you're bored out of your mind already. If you have stuck around, I really appreciate it. Um, I'm not sure exactly where I'm going with this video, but basically the point is if you want to do some sort of like aspect of photography that you haven't tried yet, or maybe you're worried the photos won't turn out great, just go out and try it. Uh, you, you know, there's no harm in trying something and if it doesn't work, then you know now not to do that again. Uh, or if it doesn't work, you could try again with, you know, things that you've learned that didn't work the first time. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. If you guys did enjoy the video, go ahead and leave a like. Uh, subscribe if you haven't already. And check me out on Instagram. I'll leave the links to everything down below the like button. So definitely go check that out. And yeah, without further ado, I will see you guys in the next one. Enjoy.